How's it going guys? Winter Kills here. Welcome back to a brand new post commentary duel video. Uh, I realize there hasn't been one of these in quite some time, but that is obviously because uh, my locals is still shut down uh, due to the pandemic. Hopefully it will be back up and running in the next few months uh, if things, uh, you know, start remotely clearing up, you know. Uh, so hopefully that is the case soon. I don't expect anything really, really soon and neither should you guys, but um, Hopefully sooner than later, right? But uh, this is a match I filmed uh, when my uh, friend Adam was over about a week ago or so. Uh, and uh, we did actually play a lot of matches. They were really only Mermel versus Eldic. Uh, and this is Eldic uh, Evil Twin or Live Twin, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, versus my Mermel build uh, that you guys have seen me cover lately uh, in recent videos, test hand videos, deck profile, etc., etc. So if you guys want to see more about that build, I highly recommend you guys check out the content I've made around it. I uh, should leave an annotation up in the top right about said build. I've also been playing it quite a bit on my stream, um, which I've actually been streaming some Dueling Book Ranked. Um, playing just only Mermel the past few days, so check that out if you haven't. Link to my Twitch below. Uh, Going to be doing some stream highlights as well soon. Going to try to bring those back here, uh, here in 2021. But you can see my opponent just ends on... Uh, set two with the uh, Eldic uh, Cursed Eldland and passes. We get started lucky enough with the Minstrel Pitching Dragoons. Uh, literally the pi picture perfect way of how to use that card or the way that you pretty much would like to always see it be used uh, in a best case scenario in a perfect world. You know, you're always starting your turn with Minstrel Pitching Dragoons. Obviously, that's not always the case, right? Uh, but when it happens, it happens and it feels pretty good. He's able to take a look at his hand here. Seeing that he has Conquistador, has also Gold Lord in hand, and he also has an Ash Blossom in hand, which we're going to swiftly remove. And we're also going to Special Summon Swap Frog here by discarding Fishborg Launcher and sending Rodan Tone into the graveyard. Now, the overall build that I've been playing since the release of that profile is really only been changing here and there, maybe by one to three cards max. Um, I think the current build... Uh, it's pretty much the exact same as the one I profiled, except there are Skullmeisters instead of DD Crows, which I talked about in the profile, how I would play Skullmeister instead of Crow. The Gamma Seals were taken out for, I believe, uh, you know, set rotation and pseudo space. And I think I cut uh, a Deep Sea Aria for a Pike. So I think I actually went, only went down to one Aria. And I think I also added in two Pot of Avarice for anybody who was curious. I believe those are the ratios. I also added in Deep Sea Artisan too. So if you go back, you know, to that profile or... Even the, the most recent test hand video, you'll, you'll get a better grasp of what the build looks ex like exactly, but you'll get the best idea and the best look at it if you check out my streams. I also plan to be uploading a testing sessions video very soon for Mermel. Um, uh, I'm going to be playing on Dueling Book because I think I'm going to make the decision to move the series over to Dueling Book. Um, just because I think it'll just be a lot better in terms of like recording it because recording trying to find matches to record on edo pro is uh, rather nightmarish i must say um so as you can see i use swap frog here to actually bounce back prince to my hand uh instead of itself so i can take advantage of prince's uh graveyard effect uh when it's discarded tino special summon back in atlantean and we get mizuchi mizuchi's a card yeah, that has been in and out of the build as well but I do realize it's important, especially when dealing with a certain card that you guys will see later on here. It's a card that I think is uh, rather problematic. This format is kind of plaguing the game a little bit, um, maybe more so than since it was released. But here's that classic combo I was talking about, setting up really, really well here uh, with the Anemone bringing back Minstrel. Um, not needing to stack Dragoons here this time around since, you know, I already was able to use Prince in hand to summon out the Dragoons when I discarded it for the Megalo. Infantry was milled, so I do get to pop his Curse Out land. That's not the best thing, obviously, because, you know, he could use its effect to send another uh, Eldritch card to the graveyard. He's going to send Golden Lord himself. Uh, we mill a Swap Frog in the process, too, which is really nice because that'll allow us to get, you know, a card like Ronin Toten up out of the grave a few times just to be able to help Link. Um, so I bring out the Fishborg launch here. So now basically I can step up here if I want to into Deep Sea Prima Dawn, which I think is what I'm going to do next. I actually decide not to summon Fishborg launcher. But right there is basically you can see the gist of the combo, how it works in a nutshell. Using uh, the Anemone to bring back the Minstrel. And ideally the field spell Megalanic of the Deep Sea City would be up 
So you could stack the top card of your deck, you know, have Minstrel Milla Dragoons for you, have it Milla Prince for you, get a search, get a summon, whatever it may be. And then ideally you're climbing up into a copy of Prima Donna. And then Prima Donna is going to put the Ash Blossom back to his hand. Because we're, at this point, we don't really care about Ash. Um, you know, all the key major big plays, as far as I'm concerned, really have been already uh, done and already been accessed. Um, maybe save for one, but you see me use Artisan. Artisan mills one to summon Dragoons from the Grave. Its effects are negated, but we're going to Synchro into uh, the uh, the Dragite. Can't remember what the card is called. Dragite. And since it was synchroed using Prima Donna, it cannot be targeted with monster effects, which is pretty nice because it'll stop Lord from just outright sending it. And another neat thing here as well uh, is that if, if there were any banished cards, I could shuffle them back into the respective owner's deck using Prima Donna's graveyard effect. You're going to see Megalo here, uh, tribute to double attack. And uh, so that Megalo is attacking twice as the search is going to go through for Lapis, just using that to get... You know, access to an extender. That's also happens to be a tuner. Gonna allow us to climb right into Halka Fibrax. Um, and uh, I believe he doesn't actually end up negating the Halk. Because I think he's pretty sure at this point that uh, I have game on board uh, 100%. Especially with already having, you know, a spell trap negate uh, in the form of Dragite here. And also having a Megalo that will be soon at 3200 once equipped with the Mizuchi. It'll give it a spell in the gate, 3200 attacking twice, you know, that's 70, or, uh, that's 6400 damage, my bad, S or, yeah, 6400 damage from just the Megalo alone, um, so that's quite a bit of damage, going up to 32, uh, swinging in twice, so we hit for 32, uh, or hit for 15, I believe, hit for 3k, uh, so he's down quite a bit here in life points, he's having DD Crow in hand too, which is kind of nice, so he takes a little bit more damage here, and I summon the D.Va off this Halk, Mainly because if the OTK per se weren't to go through, I'd want to synchro into maybe Ravenous Crocosaur uh, to basically draw an additional card and, you know, be able to provide a more of a better interruption against Elda because, you know, Mizuchi, let's be honest, really isn't going to do too much. Um, so we attack with the Megalo, and I don't think I, I've used the second attack at this point because I think I started with Halk, then uh, Dragite, and then went to attack for 32 for what would have been game with the Megalo. He used uh, Conk, and, um, you know, he tries to Hakaro on that last one and we just negate with the dragite and we're off to game two here um and uh mermail's up 1-0 against outlet granted he did have a pretty slow opening so you're gonna see the uh evil blue or the live blue or just regular blue whatever you want to call it blue is gonna summon red from deck and uh most people uh, i think I've, I've seen a few other people do like other like live twin shenanigans with this engine uh, you know, one tutoring out the other, going into the Evil Twin Link, or Evil Red, or Evil Blue. I don't know the exact combo, I'm very unfamiliar with it, but as you can see, it does facilitate two monsters onto the board, and nowadays, like we've seen in the past too in Yu-Gi-Oh!, two monsters get you awfully a lot, especially just, you know, just the cost of 2,000 life points, and, you know, why not deck thin, thin just three cards out of the deck while you're at it? You can get yourself a nice 3k pretty much invincible boss monster now luckily for me i do have gamma seal in hand which was sided in because not only is gamma seal good at just really stopping dragoon it's also very very potent at being able to slow down the outlook strategy obviously they you know go for the classic conk elixir or conk uh, sanguine rather my bad you know you can just hit the golden lord with the gamma seal and they're going to be left with uh, not much else to do because they no longer have elders the golden lord on their hand uh, or on their field, rather, so um, can be a pretty nice card to uh, stop the Elder strategy, but also great for removing the card that is just such a pain, and that is, of course, the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Also, just realized this is the first uh, dual video that I've filmed using the brand new uh, playmat, my brand new playmat through Imperium, Blazing Permafrost, more about that later. They still have some of these mats available if you guys want to get one, though, by the way. Um, but as you see, Gamma Seal is uh, going to do one thing, and it's going to do it well, and that's going to get rid of uh, the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, giving him pretty much no chance to stop it. And then we're going to normal summon Swap Frog. So Minstrel right now, not going to be too beneficial, especially since we don't have any cards in our hand that would get their effects off, you know, being discarded by Minstrel. So we're left with one of these very unfortunate circumstances where we have to use the Swap Engine to pretty much do everything. Um, 
which is like you know I, I it's a love hate with a swap engine they're really in my opinion i feel there is lacking a pretty big gap within the Mermalanian strategy of other usable archetypes that actually you know truly help facilitate the deck and to help it play better and extend better um you know i do love the swap engine i think it is really good but i find it sometimes it's literally just mediocre unfortunately torrential tribute being activated at the right time there as soon as that ronin totem or that second swap hits the field right before that totally awesome was going to get summoned out um the torrential will clear everything everything i've worked so hard for um so we're going to bring out ronin one more time and with it we're going to summon fishborg launcher and uh, I have one opportunity here to go into Link. I can go into Halk, right? To be able to summon out something like Formula or to be able to summon something out like Deep Sea Prima Donna because that is a uh, Tuner Synchro. Let's not forget. Um, could go into Alacia. Could also go into Mastar Boy. Hell, could even go into Anemone if I really, really want to do, but there's really no uh, good uh, targets. I do actually have a Pot of Avarice in hand, so I think... I think I might actually end up going for the anemone solely because I want to like get more uh, monsters in the graveyard so I can fire that pot of avarice off and I think this is a time where I was playing triple pot of avarice I've since cut down to two um, you know not because I don't want to draw two um, it's just because like it, it, it's a card that can just literally make bad hands worse um, it is a card I feel like you know after the testing I've been doing Pretty much kind of belongs within Mermel at this given point in its, uh, you know, uh, history, I guess, in its, in its life. Um, just because, you know, there's a good tendency uh, to go through a lot of your engine, uh, you know, really, really fast. Game one, turn one. Um, and the deck oftentimes will have a hard time recovering without a card like Pot of Avarice. Uh, so I actually do summon... Halk here, and I must have just missed the play then. I guess now that I'm watching it back, I see it. He's going to pay 8, feel great once more. So I think what I definitely could have done is use Halk, summon out something like Diva or Minstrel, link those into Anemone, Anemone, summon something from Grave, link those into Mastarboy, and that, I'm pretty sure, what 100% gave me enough fodder to be able to fire off that Avarice. Um, but I guess leaving the Halk on board isn't so terrible. I wait for the resolution of his uh, Cursed Eld Land, I believe, here, um, to be able to tag out for Halk. So I can make sure Formula Synchron does not miss timing, because remember, people, Formula Synchron is a when this card is summoned, so it has to be at least the last thing to happen in the chain link. Um, and if it's not, it will miss timing. So if you activate, like, Halk in response uh, to, say, like, them activating Foolish Burial, you know, Foolish Burial, uh, chain link 1, Halk, chain link 2, uh, you know, the uh, formula will get summoned and then Foolish would resolve, thus allowing uh, the formula to miss timing. So you got to do it at the proper time on the resolution of cards when the opponent sets, when they change phases, because I believe those are things that do not start a chain. And uh, he's going to get in here uh, for quite a bit of damage, quite a bit of damage, 3,500 to be exact, because that is a huge lord right now. Uh, banishing, I believe the Black Elixir, it could be wrong. Um, or the, yeah, no, that, the, the White Destiny is the, Elixir of White Destiny, I believe it's called, is the Quick Play. That's just the regular normal spell, so banishing that to get access to another, uh, Golden Land card. Um, and right now, especially with the hand that I have, it's gonna be pretty hard to play through this field. We're gonna Normal Prince, this is a very, very, very vulnerable spot. Obviously, Prince doesn't activate on Summon, being one of its biggest crutches. Um, so, you know, we'll lose it to the Conquistador, but luckily for us... Pretty sure having Teus Dragoons here, I do apologize that there was a glare on the map, wasn't aware of it at the time. I think we're ditching uh, Dragoons here, I could be wrong, we're just ditching a blank. Uh, just a random regular water, uh, just to resolve Teus, but it's good enough because it's going to allow us to meet that requirement to be able to use Pot of Avarice. But my opponent does have a response, he does have Hikaro, uh, and that will actually negate in turn, you know, allow the... 
uh, the pot of average to fizzle because of how it's worded. It says you have to shuffle all five into the deck. So I will concede and we head into game three. And before we do, I want to mention a quick way you guys can support the channel. If you're looking for any TCG accessories, check out Imperium Duelist at the link below. They offer a wide variety of products such as sleeves, deck boxes, dice, binders, apparel, and playmats, including my very own playmat, Blazing Permafrost, which is on sale now. You can get all of these amazing products for 10% off using my discount code WINNERKILLS10OFF at checkout and support the channel in the process. And of course, if you guys are buying anything on TCG Player or DrawPhase.com, do not forget to check out the affiliate links I have to their sites down in the description below because if you guys buy anything uh, on those sites using those links a small bit of the revenue from your purchase will go right back into the channel and it does help out greatly so starting here in game three a pretty solid opening uh swap ditching ronin really the best possible way uh to start some of your plays off is by swap ditching ronin because it just saves you a lot of resources you know i can get to totally awesome basically without even using my normal summon and I don't have to discard a key extender, right? I want Ronin in the grave. It's literally the perfect one-two punch setup. Uh, only if it was more common to open. Um, obviously, drawing the Ronin totem by itself does suck. But again, I feel like there is a pretty big lack of other good water extenders. Um, and other just good water cards in general. And you see, I do that before I do the D.Va. Because I know, I just know that there's a good chance that the D.Va is probably... Uh, going to get hit with some form of interruption, so I at least want to have it be protected uh, before I go ahead and commit the, uh, the very, very vulnerable normal summon that Deep Sea Diva is. So Deep Sea Diva will luckily resolve total recycle itself, because uh, there is still perhaps a chance that I can summon it one more time. And a way I would do that would be by, per se, linking both Prince and Neptibus into an enemy, and enemy would summon swaps in the last swap in the deck to the grave, and then Ronin it back out. Or Ronin summon itself back out one more time to make another toad. Um, so that is, is, is an example of you know how you could potentially do that. Uh, but now I'm going to use Minstrel Dragoons here, and I'm going to hit, I believe, yeah, the Scarlet Sanguine out of his hand um, because you know I can potentially shuffle it back into his deck. Ha you know, granted I do have the field spell uh, to go along with it, or I just have really, really good extenders in hand, and I do have Teus, do have Prince, but I actually don't think I have. The field spell here and if i do i'm gonna be pretty happy because the field spell makes all of this just function a little bit smoother but then again you know you don't always need the field spell the field spell really just makes it a lot better in my personal opinion i've been really really fond of this play line for the most part because it's still pretty much mermel you know business as usual just an like an extra different route that you can take um that oftentimes ends in some really really strong boards multiple multiple interruption boards um, so now we're going to link into the Anemone, you know, linking off that uh, Teus, if I can help it, strictly because, you know, I've got, um, I believe, a gun in hand now. Mill, Swap, Gamma Seal, and Infantry. Now, importantly, I do actually get to recycle one back to the deck, top or bottom. So I go ahead and put back the Swap Frog. It's actually one of the better things about Minstrels, not the fact that it can trigger Dragoons and Prince, like, you know, doing that mill effect. It's the fact that if you mill cards you'd rather keep in the deck, you can just use its effect to, like, put them back into the deck top or bottom. To either draw something like Crocosaur, or just simply to recycle for later use. So it does help out quite a bit. And not to mention, Deep Sea Minstrel in some instances can help make Pot of Avarice live a lot faster. So right now, I have Prima Donna on the field, as you normally do. So I have an option. I can either give him back Sanguine, right? Or I cannot give him back Sanguine. Um, uh, you know, because if I if I don't, I'll basically have to uh, link our Sinker off, rather, my Prima Donna right now and not get the extension. So this is where having the field spell up would be nice because I could use the field spell on the summon of Prima Donna to banish another card uh, from his hand. And then give him back that card and keep the more important card banished to be able to shuffle back with Prima Donna later. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. But I just, right now, I think it's not worth. And I'd rather just put that uh, Sanguine away for the time being. So that's exactly what I end up doing. Just put away uh, that uh, Sanguine. Instead, just Synchro for the Dragite. Take it a little bit safer. Summon another Teus by discarding Gun. Teus brings back Teus. To help assemble assemble a Gaios, and then we're gonna use uh, you know Ronin Banish Swap to link one more time here into my Starboy, uh, just to make sure my 
Gaios is up at a decent enough stat to make sure it can get over cards like Golden Lord. Um, right now it is currently sitting at 33. Not the biggest attack, but if, you know, if I get access to something like Mizuchi, you can go all the way up to 4100, which can even get over Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, which is really, really nice, which is one of the actual main reasons I ended up playing uh, Mizuchi again is to get over Dragoon because you need that card in the deck to be able to go over really big boss monsters, uh, especially things that can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects because that makes infantry next to useless. Uh, he does have to send Golden Lord here off. Uh, to be able to clear the Gaios, because, um, you know, he can't clear the Dragite. And that's actually going to force him to send off uh, the Red Eyes Dark Fusion, or the Red Eyes Fusion. Because uh, otherwise, I would have just negated it with the uh, Dragite. And uh, Dragite couldn't just be sent, uh, because it was uh, unable to be targeted by monster effects uh, because of Prima Donna. Anything that it summons, uh, you know, as like a Synchro. Um, anything that is used as single material for cannot be targeted by monster effects, which is really, really good. So it kind of forces him to play the way that he did. And um, on my turn, I try to get in with my Starboy just for a measly 19. Um, and that is going to get stopped. He is going to use uh, the Sanguine to summon out a Golden Lord. And uh, here, kind of running out of gas. This is where something like... Pot of Avarice would be very, very welcomed. I just don't have it right now. As you can see, I have a Swap Frog in hand. But two other Swap Frogs are banished currently. Um, and uh, checking my grave, really not much else I can do. But I'll go back to one last time talking about the lack of water extenders I think Mermel has currently. Yes, you have like the Swap Engine, you have the Undyne Engine. Um, you know, you have all these other engines, which at the end of the day are okay. But I've, I've always felt like they're just filler. Uh, and yes, you could go the route of just throwing in a bunch of hand traps and other, in quotes, good spells. But those cards in their own, you know, own way actually just hinder Mermel based on just the sheer, you know, what Mermel is. It's a deck that's very reliant on eating specific types of cards in the hand, and that's waters, you know, because that's how you, you know, resolve some of your best cards. Teus can't be summoned without discarding a water. Uh, same thing with Megalo. You can't use Minstrel. You need waters for all these things. Same thing with Swap, etc., etc. So I hope in the future... I can either find a better way to mesh uh, the cards that we have currently. Um, I was thinking about definitely experimenting more with Fishborg stuff, uh, especially with the advent of how I've been playing uh, the new Deep Sea stuff. And I actually do top deck the Lapis Dragon, which is kind of huge. Um, strictly because that's just going to summon itself uh, to the field as soon as I draw it. Because it is being added uh, from the deck to the hand, just in the form of drawing it. Uh, this is where, you know, again, I wish I had another level 7 Synchro to go into. If I had another Prima Donna right now, oh man, that would be pretty good because I could just normal the swap, Synchro swap, and Lapis into a 7, like Prima Donna, shuffle back one of his Banish cards, summon something from my deck, uh, and just kind of go off, you know, go off a little bit, or maybe go into a different level 7, I'm not entirely sure. I uh, could access, really go into any level 7 at that point, maybe Dawn Dragster, but it's just finding room in the extra deck, so... I go into Alacia, and uh, this is close to looking like one of the only ways you can boost your guides up without Mizuchi is by having Alacia up in the extra monster zone and then having a Mistar Boy and then having something like a Gaios at 28 being up, only able to go up to 38, which still can't get over a Dragoon that has negated something. So that's why I think playing Mizuchi is still really, really important. And again, it can turn off Super Poly, Dark Remore, Forbidden Droplet, all these insane cards that we know about uh, Mizuchi can stop. Uh, he's going to just unfortunately link both those Golden Lords into a Dragoon, or into a Veritana Anaconda, which will ultimately get Dragoon. He's going to use a Monster Reborn, must be nice, and I think he actually summons a Gamma Seal just so I can't drop a Gamma Seal on him. Now, I know what you're going to say here, you know what you might be thinking. Um, I actually do end up scooping here after he summons the Dragoon because he uses the Double Pop to bo bo blow up both uh, Alacia and Mistarboy, I'll take 3k from that. You know, I could have se sequenced, you know, Alacia, Chainlink 1, Mistarboy, Chainlink 2. He negates the first Alacia, uh, first Mistarboy, and then I resolve Alacia, per se, sending, like, uh, infantry to pop the Gamma Seal, and then summoning some other water from the deck. I'm just left top decking with, like, little to no advantage, and he still has Elric stuff in the grave, and I just don't see a way that I could come back, um, unfortunately. Um, so once he brings this Dragoons out with the little resources that I have left, I do 
decide uh, to just scoop it up here. Uh, maybe there's something more I could have done. Uh, it's just Dragoon is so powerful. He's going to blow all those cards up. I'll take 3k. The Dragoon is definitely still going to be sticking to the board. So I'll be taking uh, quite a bit of damage still regardless or uh, will be later uh, in a few later turns. So the Eldic deck will take the match 2-1. Uh, really, really dislike that Red Eyes Dragoon card. It is very, very powerful um, and uh, kind of tired of losing to it. Um, but it is what it is. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, drop a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That way we can get to 20,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's always Winter Kill Santa. We'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members here on YouTube, and they are Academic Thick Zors and Cadillac CD4. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support the channel like you have. It helps a lot, and again, thank you guys so much for the generous support.